Hey guys, this is Marcus of Blind Guardian and you are watching rockflash.com. Stay tuned. It's Stuart from Rockflesh here in the Subarus um, location of the um, bowels of Manchester Academy and I have with me Marcus Sapien of Blind Guardian. I, I'm going to say, I've said to you beforehand, I said again, I'm a huge fanboy so it's a huge honour to be sat here with you today. Okay, it's a pleasure. <laughs> so, you know, lots of things to talk about, you know, we've got, we've got 35 years of things to talk about, but you know, <laughs> but actually let's, you know, we're, here, we're back in the UK, this is your first UK tour in eight years, first show in the UK in seven years. I may believe, you know, Power Metal, which you are, you know, the, the vanguards of, you know, has is having a real resurgence here in the UK. You know, have you seen, did you see that last night in Glasgow? What was the crowd like? You know, yes, it was great. I mean, uh, venue was packed, crowd was great, mm -hmm. response has been awesome. I mean, we always had a great time here in the UK, so. Um, I kind of expected mm, this, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, obviously we've been here, as you mentioned, mm. like last time was like eight years ago, mm. uh, due to certain things that happened. <laughs> yeah. and we shall talk more about later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so obviously you, you can't take anything for granted mm. after yeah. eight years, mm. you know, um, but yeah, I mean, we're having a blast, mm. uh, reaction to, um, the last mm. album has mm. been awesome. Mm. Uh, when we played the stuff live, mm. people go crazy, so we're happy. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. You know, I, you know, this, this tour is supporting the album. Yet, you know, having spoilers, have a look at setlist on setlist.fm. Mm -hmm. You're only doing three tracks from it. You know, was there a choice not to put so much of it into onto the uh, set? We have, in, in the moment, we have four songs mm. from the album yeah. that we're playing live. But normally, it's just three yeah. per show. Yeah. Um, the reason is very simple. Um, you only have so much room mm. in, in the set and obviously we want to present mm. new songs mm. so we put three yeah. in the set every night but then there's the classics that people just demand yeah. to hear and we can't get around them mm. and plus then there's a couple of songs that we haven't played in ages mm. or, or maybe never played at all mm. that we also want mm. to add so um, you have to make a cut somewhere mm. because otherwise we're playing four hour shows and we're too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what we try to do is uh, uh, we're playing like, I don't know how many songs per night, but mm. we prepare maybe twice mm. as much so we can change the set list every night a bit. You know, there obviously there's a part of the set that stays the same every mm. night. But there are some spots that we keep changing and, you know, as I was saying, we're rotating mm. some new songs, we're rotating some old songs to keep it, uh, first of all, interesting for ourselves, because if you play the very same set list every single night for like two years, it gets a boring mm. routine and we don't want that. Mm. And there are many, many fans that come to more than just one show and like this, they get to see different sets. Mm. So I guess it's it's good for everybody. And that's one thing I was really interested in. I just said, you know, having been being a bit of a geek on it, I've looked at and set this has has changed as it's gone through and that you know that that's really interesting you know do you sit there and you know before you go on stage and go oh, well, let's move this there or is it something that you work out quite a long time before and the man still can do this and it's uh, i mean we're, we're pretty picky about this mm -hmm. because the 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 flow of the set is is very important mm -hmm. it can make or break a gig actually mm -hmm. so that's something that we talk about before we even start yeah. the tour and we talk about where are the spots yeah where we can swap songs and you obviously cannot swap any song in any position. If you take out a fast song that is important for the flow of the yeah. gig, there should be yeah. a fast song yeah. filling that yeah. gap. Yeah. And so it, we're, we're very picky about that. And obviously sometimes you uh, you try something early on in the tour and you realize mm, that didn't work that well. So you try to avoid that yeah. and you know, by now, what we're doing, I think, works pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> At least, yeah. judging the response of the yeah. of the of the audience. So, uh, I think we found our way, and that's good. And I quite like the fact that sort of it's almost that engineered about working. Well, that works there, and and as you said, there's some stuff that you can't take out. You know, 
I suspect you'd be lynched if you didn't do Valhalla and, and stuff and you know, things, songs like that. And do you ever get bored with that? You go, oh God, here's Valhalla for the 137th time. Um, but bored is the wrong word. Mm. Uh, I still like the song. Mm. I still like playing the mm. song. I would like to not play it <laughs> just for the sake of not playing it every single yeah. show, just to, you know, free up some mm. space for something yeah. else. But as you said, yeah, it's a very popular mm. song yeah. and people want to hear it. So why not give it to them? Because, you know, I mean, we're grateful mm. that they love this song so much. So it would be stupid to say, no, you yeah. won't get it. I mean, we did, I think the first US tour that we did, we didn't play Valhalla. Mm. There was a show in Tokyo, uh, I remember, we, where we didn't play the Bard song yeah. because we just felt like, you know what? Not today. Yeah. And you know, uh, we finished the song, yeah. the, the, the set, took a bow and everybody was like, wait, there's <laughs> something missing. We're like, no, nope, oh, there's oh, not, oh, we're oh, done. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but uh, you know, in, in general it is, I mean, uh, people love those songs, so yeah. we play them, obviously. Yeah. It, it, it would just be nice to be able to also rotate mm. those songs, because yeah. obviously everything that becomes mm. one of these classics mm takes a permanent seat on the set yeah. list and it, it gets more and more tricky to fill the rest well, definitely. or find yeah. enough yeah. room for the for yeah. the rest. And you keep on making albums which means there's going to be keeping more children and, and yeah. you know, let's talk about The God Machine. The God Machine you know, is bloody heavy. You know, it's, I, I, I felt you know, as, a, as a fan it was a real return to that real heaviness, that real, you know, there's thrashy bits in it, there's, there it's got real, you know, do you almost, when you're recording it, go, do some of these songs we're probably never going to play live because we've not got any space to actually put them in the set? Um, obviously, we, we knew right from, you, you always know this, you can't play the whole album yeah. because then you have to kick too many other songs yeah. out, so that's not yeah. going to happen. So we, we, we started rehearsing and, and focused on a couple of songs and see how we would perform then in a mm. kind of live situation, how they would blend in with the rest mm. and the, the songs we went for worked perfectly, yeah. so we're super happy. And that whole heaviness thing, I mean, that's what we were aim mm. not, not aiming for. It was not a planned thing. It's not that we were sitting down at the beginning mm. before we started writing and saying, we need to do something mm. that is much more heavy or whatever. I think it was just a natural progression yeah. with, with the orchestral album out of the yeah. way. I think we finally, you know, we've been working on that one forever. Mm. So there was this orchestral stuff always <laughs> in the back of your mind. And with that gone, yeah. Uh, the metal thing came back or, or we became heavier again mm. whatever you want to call yeah. it but it was a natural step for us we didn't think about it it just happened yeah. and yeah we were smiling <laughs> so do you see that's where the next album will go you know there's a real hope that there won't be you know the gap and uh, there was gap wise hopefully yeah. i mean obviously uh, the pandemic mm. stopped yeah. uh, every musician's life for yeah. quite some time and um, I mean, there were so many things coming together. The pandemic was one thing, then uh, results of the pandemic. We were sitting on the God Machine. It was completely recorded and mixed, and we couldn't release it for another year because uh, uh, it took that long to press vinyl because everything was occupied. There was not the raw material and anything, so we couldn't put it out. So we were sitting at home like, hmm, great, we have a new album. We can't put it out. So. All that added to the delay, so uh, hopefully next time will be much faster again. I mean, we've, we've, not never, but for a very long time, we're not the band to release an album every year. No. What, what we normally do is we put out an album, mm -hmm. we hit the road. And normally a tour that we do now lasts for like two years, yeah. two and a half years. And um, while we're touring, we're not writing new songs mm -hmm. because um, obviously, playing the set every night. This is the music that we have in our minds yeah. right now. So if yeah. we would sit down now and write a song, it would sound exactly like what we're playing every day. Mm -hmm. So our method is finish the tour, go home, clear your head for four weeks or whatever, and then start fresh mm -hmm. to not just repeat yeah. what you've been doing for the last couple of years. And that's the plan now. So uh, we didn't work on any songs yet. Um, we'll be on the road until the end of the year and then yeah. When that is done, then we'll start working on new music. And uh, 
whatever that might be like i have no idea you know it mm. might be something heavy it might be something completely mm. different i don't know we'll see so how much do you get a sort of say of what the songs because i don't know hans is, 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 is principal sort of songwriter and so how much do you get a say about what songs to be going to be about or is it, does he come to you and say right this is what i want this to be about i've written all the lyrics on this and this is where uh, lyric wise he's doing his thing mm. he, he talks to us um uh, about the things that he wants to yeah write about and we can talk about mm. this but we, we're not in really interfering mm. with with his way of writing mm. the lyrics because he's the one that has to sing it yeah. so uh, you know I think he knows best what mm. he can deliver yeah. in a convincing way yeah. plus I don't think anybody would want to read lyrics that I'm writing <laughs> because I'm not a lyric yeah. writer so uh, it has always been like that mm. what we do sometimes is like um, during songwriting we always the music always comes first yeah and only when the song is done he writes the actual yeah. lyrics but obviously during songwriting he's singing something mm. but it doesn't have to make any sense it might just be random mm. words what's important is the melody lines mm. and the rhythm of the words yeah. and sometimes he sings phrases that we like so much because they just sound mm. perfect for the chorus for example that we ask him hey, can you keep this in because it just sounds mm. right can you build something around that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't <laughs> so it's a lovely vision of him just in rehearsal things just basically free forming whatever comes to his mind is he kind of yeah, yeah. It, it's just you know you have to start somewhere yeah. obviously if 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 he hears a song yeah. or half a song or yeah. riffs or whatever for the first time there's no finished lyrics yeah. so he has to start somewhere yeah. and you, you know just go for it so actually in some ways the lyrics are probably inspired by the music around it because as yes. I said sort of it plays a role for sure it, there's, 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 there's a track about Battlestar Galactica on the new album yeah. there's this stuff about the, the American gods and stuff yeah. and, and you know again heavy subject matter and I could probably see the heavy music then brings the subject matter yeah and that's for example something how we can influence his lyrics mm. for example i was the first one to read american gods yeah. i read it like 15 years ago and i recommended him yeah. like you have to mm. read this book at some point mm. because you'll love it <laughs> and suddenly we have a song <laughs> <laughs> i'll take credit for that one yeah <laughs> no. uh, no, that, that, that's really that must be, that's really interesting just that that formation thing so in my head it was almost happening in two different places but the fact that actually it's in in that one place and the lyrics come from the songs is incredibly interesting yep but, uh, so you said uk tour um to scandinavia then off to the states and so again i, pre I presume the first time in the states for quite a while yeah i mean uh well the last tour ended in 2017 yeah. i think so yeah. yeah we did we did two rounds in the states mm. last time was 15 and 16 so yeah it's it's also eight years again is there a difference you know between the audience in the states and you know over here in europe and there's always a difference mm. i mean there's uh, sometimes fans ask us oh, where's the best audience yeah. there's no such thing as the best audience mm. you know they all have their differences and uh, they react to yeah. different songs they react to different ways mm. but who am i to say they are better than yeah. than those people states i would say is more aggressive mm. i've seen a wall of death during bard song <laughs> i've never seen that's that outside the states <laughs> uh so that's going to be interesting uh uh when it comes to to yeah. the really heavy mm. new songs we'll see uh in south america they're so loud you know they're so <laughs> euphoric yeah. chanting and and you know it's it's a bit mm. different everywhere but yeah. in the end it's 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 a metal show you know so, so you kind of know what what will happen so do you find that they're almost interested in sort of different eras of the band you know are there some countries who really want you to do you know sort of a you know do stuff from the imagination on the other side the stuff you were more interested in it, in the nightfall it, era and sometimes there is yeah for example um i would say uh, to give one example people in greece or spain they they are really heavily into the very early yeah. stuff like follow the blind yeah. italians yeah. And, and tales and stuff while other territories for example the first time we ever toured the us was rather late it was mm. on the night at the opera yeah. tour 
So obviously they have a different approach because mm. some of those people only got to know us with A Night at the Opera. The, the other day I was talking mm. to somebody, I'm, I'm a fan of the early days. You know, <laughs> uh, first song I heard was, and then there was silence. I was like, that was album number nine. <laughs> That's not the early days or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, for him it was, yeah. he got to know us with that, which is perfectly mm. fine. And obviously, you know, it, it, many times the album with which you discover a band will will be oh, yeah. always special yeah. Yeah. it's you know it, it's the same yeah. for me it's the same for everybody so mm. you have your preferences yeah. there i yeah. guess i don't know i completely with you you know somewhere in time will never be the great site made now but it's the moment where i come in and See, for and me it's killers and yeah. that's my main yeah. album so that's you know that's that's the album that turned me into a metalhead so yeah. it will always be special yeah so you know talking you know we're talking about the, the history you know, Do you ever really get a chance to look back? You know, you've been doing this for you know, 35 years. You know, you're a real established part of the, the of the of the metal, you know, sort of uh, aristocracy now. You know, do you ever get a chance to look back and go, bloody hell, we've come far? Uh, in general, we're a band that prefers to look forward, mm. but obviously you do. I mean, we mm. we did some anniversary tours last mm. year. Yeah. We did the the anniversary tour for for. Uh, Somewhere far beyond, yeah. uh, we did an anniversary tour for uh, Imaginations yeah. from the other side. Yeah. So obviously, you you yeah. realize, okay, that's like 30 years ago, that was yeah. 20 years ago, whatever it was. And it's a fantastic feeling. I mean, obviously, when we started in the middle of the 80s, we had no idea what would happen. Obviously, we were convinced we would be a big <laughs> successful band because that was the goal. Yeah. And you know. We were naive enough to take it for granted mm. that it would happen, but it was not just naive. Being naive and being lucky, uh, we put in the work. Mm. You know, we were rehearsing back then every single day. We met in the rehearsal room. We were working on the songs, uh, on our skills mm. as as musicians and whatever. And we were fighting to be successful. Mm. Obviously. In this business, luck is always a part of it. You know, might be the best band in the world if you're at the wrong place at the wrong time, then nobody will mm -hmm. realize. But yeah, like like almost 40 years later, we're still here. We're still doing this. We're still very successful, mm -hmm. and we're very happy about that. Because so I mean, obviously, that's the job of our dreams. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you turn your passion, your hobby, into a, a job, you know, it doesn't feel like a job. Obviously, especially touring can be super tiresome mm. and super stressful. It's never the gig, it's always the traveling yeah. in between that kills you. You know, the, the gig is two mm. hours of fun. Mm. But, you know, especially when it comes to flying and you have to be like mm. three hours before the flight at the airport and uh, airports are never just <laughs> around the corner. So yeah. you need to go there for two hours and, mm. and stuff like this. And then they lose your luggage and <laughs> everything. It, it's stupid. But, you know, Maybe it's, there's it's, a song there. There is, there's definitely a there, material there, for there, a There's there. a concept album. There's a concept, that, a whole yeah. concept album, yes. <laughs> I can tell you the title. The title is <laughs> "Fuck This." But <laughs> Heard it first. Title of the next. Heard it here first. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, we're we're super grateful. We're super happy about how our career turned out, and we're enjoying every second. You know. Brilliant. And the funny thing is, like, like, ten years ago, I was already asked, like, when will you guys stop? I yeah. was like. Why the fuck should we think about yeah. stopping? You know, it's it's not that we are 130 years old. You know, mm. we can do it. We we can mm. still write songs. We can play our instruments. We we'll love what we're doing. And as long as there are people liking our albums, coming to the gigs, why the hell should we think about stopping? Okay. You know, I mean, we won't stop. <laughs> Well, I no. think that's a beautiful place to end it. Thank you, Marcus. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I, My I, pleasure. I said, talk to you. Um, Marcus from Blind Guardian, and I really look forward to sort of watching you later on. You will hopefully enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you.